Hi, I'm Ryan Poliniak, Customer Account Manager at Western Computer. Today, Microsoft Dynamics NAD Solution Architect Meher Malki will show how to use timesheets in Microsoft Dynamics NAD 2016. Thank you, Ryan. So here in Dynamics NAD 2016, I'm just going to do a quick search for timesheets. And I'm going to click on the link for timesheets to take me over to the timesheets. You'll notice there's a whole slew of timesheets created. Let's go ahead and create a new one by clicking on the timesheet button up here. Steps me through creating a timesheet for the number of periods I desire with the starting date. So here I'm just going to choose one period to create one timesheet for. We go ahead and click OK and you'll find my single timesheet has been created. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom to find my empty timesheet down at the end. I'm going to select that timesheet and click on Edit Timesheet. And here we are presented with a blank timesheet with the dates for that particular period that we defined earlier. Upon filling out my timesheet under the type section, what you will find is I have the ability to create timesheets for resources, for a job, for services, for an absence where it ties back to the HR module, and for an assembly order, again, where it ties back to the assembly module. As you can see, we pull back from various modules within NAV to be able to record our time. I'm going to show you a couple of them here today. To take a look at a job, for example. If I choose to enter in my time against the job, I can go ahead and choose which job I want to enter my time in by clicking on the ellipse over here. That brings up a pop-up window that allows me to define not only the job that I want. Here, let's use this here field job. But I can even specify which job task I'm going to post my time again. So here we're going to say obtaining customer approval is going to be an area where I'm going to enter my time in. And I can define the work type code. What kind of work is it that I'm doing for this job? These work type codes are defined and set up by you as the customer. Here I'm going to go ahead and choose engineering. And I can specify whether this is a billable charge or not. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now I've set up that line to define what it is that I'm entering my time again. So let's say on Monday I want to go ahead and I want to enter in five hours against this particular job. What you'll find is here on the right in the back box you'll see that I have a total of five open hours. And those five out of eight hours have been built on that Monday. Let's go ahead and enter in some more hours, five more hours on Wednesday, and advance down to the next line. This time I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enter in an absence. So I'm going to take Thursday and Friday off for the week. So I'm going to go ahead and specify that it's an absence. And again, I'm going to click on the ellipse button to choose what is the cause of the absence. So I'm going to hit the drop down and say, oh, I just wanted a day off here. I'm going to go ahead and choose my day off and click OK. And I'm going to log eight hours to both Thursday and Friday for this. And now we see our hours rolling up here again in the fact box. I've only worked 26 out of the 40 hours for this week, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to enter some more time. I'm going to go ahead, and this time I'm going to choose a service or entering my time against the service module. So by choosing service and then click on the Edit Assist button here, I can go ahead and select which service order I'm entering my time against. So I'm going to go ahead and randomly choose the service order and once again define the work type code that I'm working on. So here I'm going to choose Engineering. And, of course, this is a chargeable time as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to backfill some of my time here. So I'm going to say I work for three hours on Monday, eight hours on Tuesday, and three more hours on Wednesday. I do a quick peek on the fact boxes on the right, and I see that I have 40 hours filled out for the week. 40 out of 40 is filled. 24 of them have a total of presence, and 16 of them show an absence. Upon completion, I can go ahead and submit my timesheet. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Submit. And I get a validation here that's asking me, do I want to submit the entire timesheet of three lines or just the single line that I have selected up there? I'm going to go ahead and say all three lines is sufficient. Go ahead and click OK. And upon doing so, you'll notice the status for each of these lines has been submitted. If I make a mistake, reopen it, make some changes, and resubmit. Some other neat features that I can do, I can copy lines from a previous timesheet. If your weeks look the same week over week, you can just go ahead and do a quick copy and save yourself some time. 
I can create lines from a job planning. So again, based on what the job structure is, I can define what they look like against my time with a simple click of a button. I can go ahead and add comment to the timesheet as a whole or down to the line level, giving me some flexibility to communicate back to my manager. With that said, let's take a look at what this looks like from a manager level. I'm going to go ahead and click OK to close out, out of this timesheet and OK again to close my timesheet list. I'm going to come back to my search box here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in timesheets again. And I'm going to select this time manager timesheets. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the timesheet in question, which is this bottom one here. I want you to notice that there are different statuses for these timesheets. I have open timesheets, I have submitted timesheets, and we know that the timesheet we're working on is submitted already. We just submitted that. If it was rejected, we'd see a check in the box. If it was approved and or posted, we'd see checks in the box. And then, of course, if there were any comments, we'd see a check in this box. As a manager, I'm going to go ahead and click on edit the timesheet to review my employee's timesheet. Once again, I take a look and I see exactly what they entered in day by day and the fact that they're all submitted. From here, I can go ahead and click on Approve. And once again, I'm presented with a similar box here that shows my approving all three lines that was in the timesheet or just the selected line. Once again, I'm going to choose all three lines. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And notice the status of all of these lines have been set to Approve. I'm going to go ahead and I take a step back by clicking OK, coming back to my list. And let's see how this updated. This here now shows that this particular timesheet that we're on, the checkbox is advanced to show that the approval exists and that there are posted entries for this timesheet. That concludes on how to enter in the timesheet. That concludes today's video. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all the latest video releases. Thanks for watching.